Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel. In this episode, which will be a two-part series, we're going to take a look at how to adjust or manipulate some STL files within vCarve. I know this can be done in Aspire, but using vCarve software from Vector makes it a little bit more challenging. So let's get started. We set up our job. And we import an STL file that I found on the internet. We set the size to fit our material. And hit OK. I like the shape of it, but I'm not really happy with the words. I'd like to change them. I'm going to use the shadow shading just so that I can see the details a little bit more. Our first step in adjusting this is to draw a vector around the words that we want to eliminate. I then add a new level, and I'm going to bring in one of the clip art that's found within the software. And that'll be placed on that level too. I'm going to change the level property to merge. And if I select the vector and change the property of the level to clip, you'll see that only the area within the vector is shown. I can adjust the height of that component and try to match it to the existing model. But another way to do it would be to hover over the area I want to match and use that dimension that's shown at the bottom right hand of the screen. Set my component shape to that measurement. And now it matches perfectly. Of course, I would like to bake the property of that component, but unfortunately the software won't let me unless I remove the special clipping property of that level. So, so you just right click on the level, say remove the property, Now we can go back into our component properties and bake it. Is it necessary to bake? Not really, but I like to do it just because I'm so sure of the measurements and the settings that I have. Now we can go back in, select the vector and use the clipping tool. And there you can see we've eliminated the word and now we can do what we'd like with it. You'll see though, if I want to try to do something else with the clipping, I first need to select the vector. So that error message is important and helpful. You can now create the text that's appropriate for your plaque. I chose the word service. I 
I position my model within my material. I'm going to just use, for this example, the Finish Toolpath. We can certainly preview it. And now with the text, it's a simple V-carve. But we need to project this V-carve toolpath onto our 3D model. Preview that toolpath. And we have a new plaque. I'm going to change the color of this toolpath so we can see it a little bit better. But there is one advantage to using the color toolpath. You may find some errors easier than if it was not a specific color. And this is the tip of the day. If you look at the top right hand corner of the letter E, you can see the toolpath has gouged our design. If it was the normal color of our material, you may not notice it. But by changing the color of the toolpath, some things may show out a little bit easier. Of course, to eliminate this error, as I call it, I would have to go in and adjust the letter E, move it a little bit more to the left so that the toolpath doesn't bump into that 3D model. At this point, the V carving worked pretty well. But then I thought to myself, I would like the letters to stand proud, to be dimensional, just like the plaque itself. So I thought, I wonder if I can bring in another component, a dome, for example. On its own level, select the vectors that created the text and use the clipping again for that level. Well, I was surprised. There it is. Our words are now dimensional. Although a little bit too tall in the Z, you can certainly now go in and adjust that component so the letters sit better. Now the letters are dimensional, but they have a bit of a curve to it. Adds a little bit of a twist instead of just a simple V-carve. Again, we need to position the model within the material. Showing the finished toolpath. And preview it. It gives you some options on how to use V-Carve, not Aspire, but using V-Carve to create interesting plaques or models. This is the original, which was nice. This is our V-Carved, which is also nice. And this is what I call our 3D plaque, which again, it's nice. Just different options for you to think through. Of course, for those of you who know me a little bit, I tend to go overboard. So let's look at other components we can add. I found a nice flourish within the software. 
I bring that into our workspace and adjust it. All of these things are now just part of the art of design. The reason you can't see the component at this point is because it's on the level that has the clipping property attached to it. I need to insert a new level and move that flourish component to level four. We can adjust the base height or shape height of the component, or we can adjust the base height of just the level. So anything placed on that level will be adjusted appropriately. I'm going to mirror this left to right. Certainly I could have mirrored the component itself, but I just wanted to show again more options. I only use one component, but I used the option of mirroring on that level, any component placed within it. I add a few more components. These are all within the software. This bar I imagine as being the place where you can engrave a person's name. And hopefully through this, you can see the effective use of levels. I wanted to add a few more little details. I found a nice picture on the internet. I use the trace bitmap to create vectors of that. Of course, I sized them down to what would be appropriate. Came out rather nicely, I thought. I'm going to add a small component, a small dome just for that area. I choose the levels I wanna see. The one with the service words that's three-dimensional. The one with the flourishes. The one with the bar. And of course, our dome. And on top of that dome, we're going to be doing the V-carving of this little emblem. I first want to do the finished toolpath of the entire model. And then as usual, selecting the vectors, we'll create a V-carve. Now this is a rather tight little emblem, so we may need to use a very small angled B-bit to accomplish this. Project it onto the 3D model. Again, choose the color just so it's a little bit more visible. And there we have it. And here's another example of how you can approach the letters. Even though you can't create truly rounded topped letters, you can become rather creative. So we have our letters and we're going to now then apply a dome, a small little dome or button underneath each letter. You can see each letter is on its own level and that level is set to clipping. So to see what happens in the 3D view, our letters are slightly rounded. And let's add that to the rest of the composition. 
we have our base, we have our flat spot that fills in the V carving, and of course, the other little parts that we added before. It's a nice change, something slightly different, something you wouldn't expect out of V-Carve. Of course, you can adjust each of these domes or dishes to whatever height you're comfortable with. So let's take a look at our final results. We have our original 3D model that we found on the internet. The letters were V-carved, but we wanted to change the wording. So we came up with this as an alternative, a V-carved plaque. But we wanted something more. So we moved a little further and created what I called our 3D plaque with details. And then we looked at how we can adjust and how we can customize each letter to be more rounded individually. And I call this the button letters. Let your imagination run wild. It's fun to play with this. You never know what to expect. You'll never know what you can come up with if you don't try. In our next episode, I call it From This to That. Again, only using the B-Carve software. You can see the original on the left and how I then was able to manipulate it. So the couple is now on the right-hand side of the bench. It's simply not flipping them over. It's something quite different. If you want to learn more about the software, subscribe and click on the bell so you're notified of future videos. And as usual, if you have any questions, send me an email, mm.mazalik.com. I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.